Hello, 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 hello. When light changes medium, the speed of light changes. In water and in glass, the speed of light is lower than the speed of light in vacuum, which is about the same as the speed of light in air, by the way. And so the question now is, does the energy of the photon, if we think as lights in terms of photons, does the energy change when it goes from one medium to another medium? In other words, is the energy related to its speed? Which, of course, if you think Newtonian, and you think of light photons having mass, then the answer will have to be the lower the speed, the lower the energy. But that's not true in quantum mechanics. Because mass of photons is zero. So you cannot think Newtonian. You ready? Einstein's theory of special relativity. The energy of any particle, including photons, is the square root of m squared c to the fourth plus p squared c squared. n is the rest mass. c is the speed of light in vacuum. p is the momentum. This is also equal to gamma mc squared. It's the same. Gamma is the famous Lorentz contraction factor. 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus beta squared, and beta is v over c. Well, you can do your homework on that. For a photon, the rest mass is 0. This is gone. And so E equals PC. So a, moton, a photon has no mass, but it does have momentum. Momentum. Think about that. It's a non-Newtonian idea. But quantum mechanics and Newtonian thinking are very different. So yes, photons have momentum. It's still equal to gamma mc squared. But this is a meaningless statement because gamma is infinity if v is c and the mass is zero. So this is still correct, but it's meaningless. So E equals PC. We now go to de Broglie, for which he got the Nobel Prize, by the way. Einstein didn't get the Nobel Prize for that. So de Broglie stated that the wavelength of any particle that has momentum P is H divided by P. So the larger the momentum, the smaller the wavelength. And H is Planck's constant. Now lambda equals C divided by F. That's still Newtonian, of course, because if something travels with the speed of C, then the distance that it has traveled is the velocity times time, and 1 over the time is frequency. So lambda equals C divided by the frequency if now we think of the light in terms of a wave, which is perfectly allowed. So this is Newtonian. The wavelength of anything that moves with speed c is c divided by the frequency of the wave. So we go back to E equals pc. And we substitute for p h divided by lambda, and we substitute for lambda c divided by f, and you find that the energy of a photon is hf. It only depends on its frequency. 
And when a photon goes from one medium to another, the frequency doesn't change. So the energy doesn't change. Yes, the wavelength changes, but not the frequency and therefore not the energy. You take glass, index of reflection is one and a half. So the speed of light in glass is one and a half times smaller than the speed of light in air, in vacuum. So you see lambda equals C divided by F divided by N, so it is one and a half times smaller. So whenever light changes from one medium to another, yes, its speed can change, can go up higher, can go lower, can never go higher than C, by the way. The wavelength will change, frequency stays the same, energy stays the same. Most of you have this correct, by the way. So, I'm happy with the results. Most of you have this correct. Have a nice day, take care, and we'll be friends, and that will never change. Never change. Most people remember the famous equation E equals mc squared, but they really don't know what it means. My mother knows E equals mc squared, and my wife knows E equals mc squared. Neither one know any physics. So I even claim that most of you who remember E equals mc squared don't know either what it means. E is only mc squared when gamma is 1. That means when the object is not moving. That's why we call M the rest mass. It's not moving. The wavelength of light depends on the medium. The wavelength is smaller in water than in air. It's about the same in air as in vacuum. So ask yourself now the question, if you were on the water and you would look at red light, red light that enters the water from above, and you look at that light, would you see it shifted a little bit in the direction of blue, because blue has a smaller wavelength than red? And the answer is no. Your eyes will also respond to the frequency. And not just to the wavelength. You can measure the wavelengths with a grating. I cover that in my lectures. So yes, you can separate blue light from red light with a grating. But when you're underwater, red light that enters the water, you will still see it as a red light. <laughs> okay? I hope that this helps you a little bit.